So, friends, go down to your friendly farmer Bernie's market, pick up two cans of Prince Papuli's papaya juice for only 59 cents. As you know, Dave was raised in Hawaii. Dave, you tell him how good Prince Papuli's papaya juice is. I can't stand it! Nevertheless, get some at Friendly Farmer Bernie's Market. Two cans for 59 cents. And don't ever come back to my island. <laughs> good morning, David. Good morning, Mr. Hutton. Good morning, Lawrence. Good morning, Roland. Roland? Show some respect. I run this station like I ran my ship aground. <laughs> Mr. Hutton, um... Did you find out anything about my car? What car? The new one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I spoke to Mr. Merman at Merman Motors, and he said he would be delighted to sell you one of his cars at dealer's cost. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> Who wrote this joke for the show? I did. It's out. <laughs> about my old car, will I at least get a good trade-in on my old car? Hey, I didn't second, ask. Dave. Shush. What kind of a car is it? It's a calamari. It's an Italian sports car. It's also an Italian dinner. Calamari means octopus. Right. Well, they call it an octopus because it has eight gears. Five forward, three reverse. Listen, well, about I that car, didn't you I tell you to shush? <laughs> I'll call Mr. Merman about your octopus. Lawrence, did you play this rock and roll record at 7 o'clock this morning? Yes. You will never play it again. <laughs> Now, you're not going to sell me your old car? Never sell a used car to a friend or you'll end up with a used friend. You mean you're going to sell that little beauty to a complete stranger? The completer the better, because if something goes wrong, I won't have you around making me feel nervous all the time and asking me to fix it. Dave, look, I promise if you sell me the car, I won't complain about anything. You don't even have to give me a guarantee. Oh, I'll give you a guarantee. If I sell you the car, I guarantee it'll ruin our friendship. Now, wait a minute, Dave. Five I years ago, you... you five... Listen to me. Five I years... Hear you. Five years ago, you... <laughs> Is our car going to be exactly like this one? Exactly. Good. Honey, you sure this car's going to make you happy? Delirious. Then we'll get it. Bye-bye, gear shift. Bye-bye, calamari. I know you love that old car, but just think of all the money you're going to save on ripped stockings. Yeah, but that's the best part of the car. Seeing your knees, I used to get in and out of the little car. I loved it. <laughs> I'll show you my knees anytime you want. <laughs> what are you going to do with the octopus? Oh, Larry wants to buy it. Good. No, bad. Why? Well, I don't want to fight with Larry the way you fought with your cousin Sheila when she sold you that stupid sewing machine. But that was different. Why? You remember why we had that fight? Because the boobins kept falling out. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't have mattered if she'd told me about it. So, if you told Larry everything that was wrong with the car before you sold it to him, there'd be nothing to fight about. See, you know, honey, since you married me, you're getting brilliant. <laughs> uh, get that paper and pencil. We'll write down everything that's wrong with the car. Scratches, dents. Scra yeah, scratches, dents, nicks, everything. We'll start from the front, work all the way back, okay? Okay. Okay. Right, front, fender, missing. <laughs> Peter doesn't work well. Peter doesn't work. <laughs> Left rear tire is bald. And the rest of them are losing their hair. <laughs> Honey, we can't sell this car to a friend. That's it. Then we'll take an ad in the paper? Right. For sale. 1958 Calamari in perfect condition. <laughs> for demolition derby. How long are you going to hold a grudge, Larry? How long? Ten years from today, you'll be asking me the same question. I'm not going to sell you the car. Okay, Dave, I'm going to tell you something. No, I'm going to tell you something. No, no, you... Walk away shoe commercial. Okay, interview me. I don't even want to talk to you. Hello there, my beauty. Uh, just a second, friends. A smiling, barefoot gentleman wearing a turban, carrying a... Carrying a pair of shoes in his hand, just walked in. What is it, sir? I have just run all the way here from India. Oh, are you in a race? Oh, yes, with a tiger. He was chasing me. Say, isn't that a pair of walk-away shoes you have in your hands? Oh, how perceptive. Yes, it is. I wear them on my hands. Well, how come? It keeps the tigers from chasing me. But you just said a tiger was chasing you. That's why I am returning them. They don't work, you know. <laughs> well, friends, 
Walk-away shoes may not keep tigers from chasing you I, 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 or eating you. <laughs> they will keep your pocketbook and your feet happy. And like they say in the little tune, buy walk-away walk shoes and walk away happy. <laughs> okay, Dave, I tell you, I am steamed. I'd rather have you steam now than every time you drive that car. Okay, Dave, no more argument. Good. I hope a thousand people answer your ad. Thank you. And I hope they all call up at 3 a.m. in the morning and say, <laughs> No, sir. $900 is firm. I can't possibly go, uh, go below $900. Right, okay, thanks for calling. Bye-bye. You coming with me? No, honey, I better stick around. Some people call said they might come by and see the car. Okay, good luck. Thanks. I'll get it. You can't. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hello? Oh, just a second. I'll let you talk to my husband. Who is he? Sounds like an Italian person. Good. <laughs> Hello? Yes, that's the ad in the paper, sir. It's my ad. Uh-huh. Well, let me suggest this. If you do buy the car, don't put it in the garage. Stick it in your nose. <laughs> Larry, you do a lousy Italian accent. <laughs> Get in on time tomorrow, Larry. Goodbye. Uh, here you are, darling. Thank you, darling. Coming. Mr. Newitt? Yes? I'm Miss Zellner. Oh, you called about the car. I'm not too late, am I? No, you're just in time. Why don't you come on in? Oh, you don't know how long I've been looking for a decent car, Murray. Well, I think you found one. Oh, honey, this is my wife. I uh, know. <laughs> I mean, this is my wife, and you're Miss... Zellner. This is Miss Zellner. Hello. How do you do? She's been looking for a calamari, honey. Well, you found one. I love the car myself, but she'd rather have one with an automatic drive. Oh, I love to shift for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got eight gears to do it in. <laughs> I know. Listen, I have to ask you this. Are you the same David Lewis who's on the radio? Guilty. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you do it? Right. With a whistle. With a whistle. Would you like this? Oh, I love you. <laughs> Don't you just love him? Yes. <laughs> you want to look at the car? I can't wait. <laughs> Since it's not in the living room, let's take a look in the garage. That's where it's living. <laughs> you are so funny. Thank you. <laughs> oh, honey, you want to go with us? Oh, are you going to cleaners, aren't you? Well, it's getting late, and I'm anxious to see if, <laughs> if you sell the car to Miss Zellner. Oh. It is Miss, isn't it? Yes. No, darling, I don't think I'll go out after all. I think I'll stick around and see what happens oh. with the car. Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Elna, you want to see the car? You love it. Oh, I do already. Mm. You think I'll be driving David Lewis's Colin Murray? <laughs> mm. Well, how's it going? I can't tell yet. David, you've been out there over a half hour. I know. Isn't that great? Why? Nobody else looked at the car that long. Where are you going? Test drive. It's getting kind of cold out there. I'll be back in a minute, honey. Audrey's really interested. Audrey is? I think she's the one. I think she's the one, too. Don't worry about the fender. I fixed everything free. <laughs> hey, senora, we have good news for you. Honey, you're looking at the new owner of our proud little calamari. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm sorry we took so long, hon. We had a little adventure. Oh. Uh, you, you know the left rear tire? Boy, pow, right on the parkway. But how did you get back? You didn't have a spare. Well, we had to get towed to Colchester. Uh, they fixed the tire, put a new one on. Now we have a spare. You bought a new tire? Well, you can't sell a car without a spare. Here you have a very sweet husband. I do. You know what this boy did. What? He gave me a complete driving lesson. And then he even showed me how to get in and out of the car so I wouldn't rip my stockings. <laughs> David, you're so considerate. Well, honey, it was you who went and invented the technique, the cross-legged swing over. You know she invented the cross-legged swing over? You're such a punkin. <laughs> 
<laughs> bill of sale. Bill of sale. Sign the bill of sale, you give me a check, you got yourself a calamari. Now, this check is only for 400 but I'll mail you the other 400 tomorrow. No rush. <laughs> well, here's the bill of sale and the keys and happy motoring to you. Thank you so much. Darling, huh? she doesn't need our house key. <laughs> or the key to my record cabinet. <laughs> Oh, for your hat either. Uh, the, the heater wasn't working too good. No, it wasn't. You will fix that one. Uh, don't worry. Um, well, as they say, buona sera and buona fortuna. Oh, that's Italian. I know what that means. It means goodbye and good luck. Yeah. But, uh, goodbye <laughs> and good luck. Well, honey, you finally got rid of her. David, do you realize you were gone over an hour and a half? Well, honey, I told you we had a flat and there were a lot of things to show and tell. She asked me more darn questions. She's very intelligent, you know. She's a teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, did she teach you that 400 and 400 add up to 900? <laughs> oh, that. Um, I was going to tell you about that. Yeah, I was going to ask you to tell me about that. Oh, uh, that. Uh, 900 was only my asking price. To everyone except bleach blonde. Now, wait a minute, honey. Nobody wanted to pay 900 for that car. She loved that car and could only afford eight. And I don't think she was bleached. She is. <laughs> and what about fixing the heater and the new tire? Well, that deal was made before we actually shook hands on the deal. Uh, figuratively speaking. <laughs> All I know is that for Larry, your best friend, you didn't want to fix anything. But for her, you practically rebuilt the whole car. Now, just hold it. Now, I don't think it's very fair of you to think that my dealing with that lady had anything to do with her knees. Who mentioned her knees? Your face. Remember when she mentioned the cross-legged swing over? Your face had knees written all over it. So did yours. Well, honey, next to yours, hers are nothing. Knees. Then you did look at them. Yes, I did. Uh-huh. Why? Why? Because they were there. <laughs> honey. Come over here. You come over here and sit right down here. Right here, honey. <laughs> honey, you want to sit down right here? With me? Here we go. <laughs> now we're sitting together. <laughs> you know, honey, in the next 40 years of our marriage, there's going to be millions of knees and legs marching in front of my face. <laughs> And my brain is going to involuntarily record their passage. But yours will be the only legs whose stockings will be allowed to hang in my bathroom. <laughs> here, let me get at you a little better here. <laughs> Don't move your face or your mouth. Coming. Hi, it's me again. Yes, it is. I hate to bother you, but... But it looks like rain, and I can't find that windshield wiper button. Oh, don't you remember I told you? It's in the glove compartment. That little button has to be cemented on to the rod. <laughs> Which rod? Come on, I'll show you. <clears throat> Better yet, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's the little rod right underneath the fuel gauge. Oh, oh yes. Well, I'm so sorry to have bothered you again. Anytime. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, honey, you moved your mouth. Why did you say that? I was just trying to be cute with you. No, I mean when she said, I'm so sorry to have bothered you. You said any time. That's just a figure of speech. Any time is the same thing as saying goodbye. You also said goodbye. You're right. I am guilty. I am guilty, guilty of repeating myself, but that's the only darn thing I'm guilty of. It's not you I'm worried about. It's her. Oh, honey, all she was interested in was my car. Well, I doubt it. Nobody goes to buy a car wearing that much perfume. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey. Hey, what are you doing with my coat? I'm airing it. <laughs> if that doesn't work, I'm burning it. <laughs> I think she better burn it. <laughs> Hi, honey. Patrick the Punter is here. Hi. Hi. Guess what? You'll die. You won't believe it. You know what I did today, honey? I shot an 83 today. 
score like that deserves a better kiss. Well, you're not going to get one. You mean every time I play golf, you're going to give me a rotten kiss and get mad at me? No, every time she calls. <laughs> she? She. Well, what? What? What did she want? She wouldn't discuss it with me. She says she wants to talk to David. <laughs> now, that's peculiar. I thought we discussed everything this morning. You talked to her this morning? Well, she came by to give me the check. Did the post office go out of business? Oh, funny. I shot an 83. Don't ruin my day, honey. Would you like me to get that? I bet you would. I will. <laughs> Hello? Oh. It's the, uh... <laughs> I was just talking to my wife. Oh? She says hello to you, honey. And she says hello right back to you. <laughs> How's the car going? Good. It won't. That's fun. Hey, honey, the trunk won't close. Well, right by the hinge, there's a little Italian lever. I mean, it, <laughs> it says, chiudere spingere to close push. <laughs> well, it's right there. It's easy to find. Well, do you think that's necessary? <laughs> I'll be done. I've been looking all over for that. Wait a minute. Hey, honey, she found the lens cap to my camera. Hooray! And what? And yellow sunglasses? Oh, they probably belong to... Hey, sweetheart, did you lose some yellow sunglasses? She can keep them. I wouldn't want her to come all the way back just for a pair of sunglasses. Well, she's got to return my lens cap. Oh? I was hoping you could live without that. Well, that sure is nice of you. I appreciate it. Right, I guess we could. Listen, you make a little list, and I'll see you around 10, okay? Would that be all right? Fine, goodbye. That does it, boy. This lady here in that phone is a pain in the neck. I'll tell you, I thought Larry was bad. Uh-uh. Give me this. Fix that. Well, I'll tell you something, honey. I had her right up to here. Tomorrow morning at the studio, I'm going to tell her goodbye and good luck in English. Don't you agree with me, honey? I sure bet you do. I'll give you a little kiss, and I'm going to take a shower. It didn't work. I didn't think it would. <laughs> so, friends, there they have went. Gone. What? There they gone went. Four more hours, the Lewis and Clark thing. This is David Lewis. And Larry Clark. See you tomorrow, Dave. Okay. Hey, uh, don't you want to help me clean up? I got an appointment at my doctor's. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, you ought to come with me and have your head examined. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen, I t I'm going to tell her this is our last meeting. Sure, I, I believe sure. me. You're going to end up buying that dame a whole new car. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm hurt, Dave. I am really, really, really hurt. <laughs> now, there's an album cover. <laughs> hi. Hello. I'm Audrey Zellner. Oh, hi. How high? Th oh, hi. This is the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the young lady we were talking about. You were talking about me. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was. I was saying that since you were coming, I, I couldn't go to the doctor with Larry. Oh, this is Larry Clark. This is Miss uh, Zellner. Oh, hello. How are you? Hi. Oh, I'm How much, are you? much better now. As a matter of fact, I don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's as cute as you are. <laughs> much cuter. I'm not married. <laughs> uh, Dave, uh, Dave tells me you're a teacher. What do you teach? Biology. Biology? <laughs> Perfect. You'll never use a blackboard. <laughs> Before I forget, here are your wife's sunglasses. Uh, thank you. Thank and you. your lens cap. Uh, thank you. This is my list. I keep finding all kinds of little problems. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, now, uh, Miss Zellner, as far as that's concerned, you must understand that I'm not... Well, what I'm trying to say is that when I sold you that car... Uh, that's right, Miss Zellner. When Dave sold that car, uh, I should say our car. You see, I know as much about that car as he does. <laughs> and what I was about to suggest means Dave has to rush home to his wife. Uh, I'm not married, you know. Uh, <laughs> Larry. Trust me, Dave, I'm going to represent you in this little, uh, what, transaction? Larry, excuse it. <laughs> Dave, Dave, I've got the time, believe me. Now, will you cool it? Now, listen, honey, why don't you go buzz for the elevator, and I will talk to Dave about tomorrow morning, morning show, and then I'll be right there, okay? Oh, fine. Fine. It's okay with you if Mr. Clark handles this, isn't it? It's okay. Okay. Well, wonderful. Bye, David. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 Dave, David, 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 why didn't you tell me she was like that? That's not important. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to get her off your back. Believe me, Dave, a quiet lunch, a couple of margaritas, she'll never bother you about that car again. Is that why you're doing this? Mainly. <laughs> it better be mainly. <laughs> <laughs>
It is. I'll be right there, hon. Believe me, pal, everything is under control, old buddy. Hey, Lair? Yeah? You're not mad at me anymore for not selling you the car, are you? Never could hold a grudge. <laughs> Coming, Teach! <laughs> You'll never see Miss Zellner again. Larry's gonna handle the whole thing. Larry can't handle anything, including his own life. Don't worry, this he can handle, I guarantee. Hello. It's him, hon. How's it going? Just great. She's quite a girl. Yeah, I know that. I hope you tell her to quit calling me every time something goes wrong with that car. Dave, I made it very clear. I laid it right on the line. Good boy. Uh, then on the other hand, Dave, uh, she has her side too, you know. Oh, uh, hold on, Lara. Uh, whose side are you on? I'm on the side of justice. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna fix or sell or buy or anything in that car. Look, Dave, this poor girl is broken desperate. Don't let her build fool you. Quit guessing. A wrench? <laughs> <laughs> She's not all wrong, you know, Dave. <laughs> oh, Larry, ah, where are you? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm at a garage. <clears throat> hey, Guido, Guido, hand me that wrench! <laughs> <laughs> Larry, goodbye. Give Guido a kiss for me, will you? Is that your last word? I can't say my last word. They'll come and take my phone away. <laughs> Hi, you're in kind of early, aren't you? Excuse me. Yeah, I uh, wanted to talk to you, Dave. I think we discussed that last night, Larry. I'm not going to fix that car. I know, I know. But after we talked, I got to thinking, and I realized you were right. I am? Sure. Now, what was the reason you said you wouldn't sell me the car in the first place? Because I didn't want to feel obligated to you, and it would cost me a lot of money. Right. For me, you'd fix the car up. Right, huh? Well, right. That's why I sold it to a perfect stranger, so I wouldn't feel obligated all the time. I agree, and that's exactly the way I explained it to Audrey. Did she understand? Not really. So I worked out a perfect solution. What do I have to do? Just fix up everything that's wrong with the car. I told you I'm not gonna do that. For Audrey. Right, but you're doing it for me. Why? I bought the car. <laughs> you, you mean after we went all through this, you bought the car I didn't even want to sell you? That's right, pal. Well, that's crazy. Now you've got a big repair bill. Not me, you. <laughs> Not me, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a second ago, you said if you sold me the car, you'd end up fixing it. Right. But I didn't sell you the car. Audrey did. <laughs> Wait a minute. Audrey and I had the same thing. If you, if you, I don't think so. No, no, if you sold the car to Audrey, you sold the car. But, Audrey, I got the whole evening planned. Yeah, tickets to the theater. And yes, dinner reservations, the whole... Oh, thanks a lot. Okay, well, forget it. Thanks. Boy, you really fixed me up with a butte. It's all your fault. All I know is because of you, I got a car I hate and a girl who hates me. You did a good show, David. Thank you, Mr. Hutton. As for you, you sounded a bit surly this morning. Oh, baloney, Roland. <laughs> baloney, Roland? Baloney, Mr. Hutton. <laughs> David, I have good news for you. Mr. Merman has found a buyer for your car, and he'll pay you $850 for it. Hey, that's great. Will you sus? <laughs> Thank you, but I sold it. I bought the car. What's the guy's name? You bought the car? Yeah, but I want to sell it. Well, what's the guy's name? You will never know. 